For millennia, humans have set controlled fires to clear land for hunting, pastures, and crops. Early people of the Americas did it, people in the Bible did it. Today, the use of fire in agriculture is common across Africa, Southern Asia, and South America. It's useful, but it's become problematic. Growing population, warming climate, and fragmentation of forests have made Earth's surface much more prone to escaped fires. Some researchers think we are entering an age of megafires. Ever bigger, longer burning blazes caused by people or natural factors are sweeping land from Indonesia to Russia, Australia, and the American West. These fires destroy resources, alter ecosystems, and create health problems for young and old. They also seed the air with ever more globe warming carbon dioxide and soot, which may in turn encourage more fires. In the Peruvian Amazon, scientists from Columbia University's Earth Institute and his partners are studying man-made fires, the main tool there for ongoing human invasion of forests. They're chasing down these fires on the ground to pin down how they start, why some spread while others stay contained, and what the future might hold. It's a regional look at a global issue. Columbia professor Miguel Pinedo Vasquez grew up here in a roadless area several days by river from the frontier city of Pucallpa. His family practiced slash and burn farming. Now he's come back to study how it's changing. Now in Pucallpa, fire is not just used for cleaning the land and planting your crops. Fire is increasingly used also by cattle ranchers to manage the pasture. So it's, it's very cheap just to burn. One of the downsides is there is no capacity of the system to recover and uh, establish woody vegetation, trees. Population here has boomed with people moving down from the Andes to carve out plots from the jungle. They burn out trees and brush so they can plant fruits and vegetables and set out livestock. Burning also releases nutrients back into the soil. Traditionally, Amazonians did it in cycles, letting the jungle return periodically so the land would recover. Humid forests once formed natural fire breaks around their small plots. But now, the road grid is spreading and all along it, isolated farms in the woods are turning into a checkerboard of permanent cultivation and unused fields. This is a much more flammable arrangement and there's more infrastructure at risk. Absentee landlords are setting up cattle ranches that use fire on massive scales to convert large areas to non-native grasses. These grasses thrive on regular burning. In the end, native trees, plants, and animals disappear. Soil is exhausted, pastures are abandoned, and yearly blazes cover ever larger areas. Some climate projections say that increasing global temperatures will decrease the Amazon's rainfall and worsen the problem. It may already be happening. In 2005, the Amazon's worst drought in a century saw hundreds of thousands of acres burn. Then, 2010 was even drier. Instead of soaking up carbon as usual, Amazonia that year emitted more carbon dioxide than all the industries of the United States. Sometimes Pucallpa is covered with a pall of smoke. Fires are everywhere. Airplanes may not even have visibility to land. Earth Institute researchers recently showed they can predict dangerous droughts months ahead by measuring seasonal temperature changes over the Atlantic Ocean. But they can't stop the droughts. Peruvian farmers' usual burning season is the dry period of August to September. This is also peak time for field research. To find big fires, the team relies partly on NASA satellite imagery that can spot blazes from space. They also ask around town to find out who's burning that week. Some days they just drive around the back dirt roads looking for smoke. That's how they found this giant fire in progress. Investigating it combines sociology and physics, up close and personal. They go right up to the front of the fire, walk through the smoldering remains. They try not to breathe too deep and they make sure they can escape when the things start up again. They measure the fire's extent, the kind of vegetation it's consuming, the wind direction, and the makeup of land nearby. They talk to the locals to find out if it was intentionally set and how long it's been going, and how or whether anyone's trying to manage it. Yeah, I'm also wondering if the fact that fire is going that way, 
because of the wind that's blowing that way or the situation sort of change in the food gradient that makes caused by the fire that makes the wind go that way. The team learned that this one started by accident when neighbors were roasting some fish. The landlord had removed big trees to plant crops, but the crops didn't take and scrubby trees grew back. Like an increasing number of landowners, this one doesn't live here, so no one's bothering to do anything. This fire has already eaten dozens of acres, and it will probably eat a lot more before it burns itself out in a week or so. Another day, another fire. This one's more controlled. It was set by a small farmer named Victor Gonzalez. Gonzalez lives nearby and says he plans to plant cassava. He says he burns only in the morning when wind is less likely to fan things out of control. He and a couple of helpers have been out here for hours, tending the blaze like shepherds watching their sheep. But as we're talking, suddenly the fire jumps right to the neighbor's property line, and they have to scramble to stop it. It's a battle with primitive weapons, including tree branches and machetes, but they do manage to beat it out, at least for now. For them, firefighting is an everyday survival skill. Pinedo Vasquez says these small farmers are the best hope for keeping some rough harmony between the cultivated world and what's left of the natural world. But anyone who looks around can see the cultivated world is gaining. Here and across the world, small farmers are being lured to cities like Pucallpa. But there they still need farm products. Endgame in the Amazon may be the arrival of total land clearing for industrial scale farming. Flammable little farms are now being consolidated into giant plantations of corn or oil palms. These monocultures are managed with imported machines, pesticides, and fertilizers, not fire. And once they're established, they're not as susceptible to fire as small farms, so eventually fires here may decrease. On the other hand, these crops supply massive quantities of not just food, but biofuels. And more and more, the crops go for export. That means we're still burning the produce of the land. We're just doing it somewhere else.